From the Alvin and Rosalie Sarachek Studio, PBS Kansas presents Ageless Enthusiasm. Coming up on this episode of Ageless Enthusiasm, I speak with Delno Eby, who is a working actor who is chasing after his passion. We shot some uh, portions of the Contested Plains, the movie I did last year. And I also speak with Gigi Davis, who is an artist who's getting ready for a big art show. I took all of my United Miles and I enrolled in an art workshop in Paris. I'm Mindy East. That's what's coming up on this episode of Ageless Enthusiasm. Welcome to Ageless Enthusiasm. We're here in the beautiful Mid-America All Indian Center Museum in front of this gorgeous mural by Black Bear Boson in the shadow of the Keeper of the Plain statue. And my guest today is Delno E.B. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. You're a working actor right here in Wichita. I am. So I want to hear a little bit about your indigenous background and how did you become an actor? Well, a little bit about my indigenous background. Um, I've been doing a lot of um, genealogy and, and uh, discovering that over the years myself because um, what my family thought we were, turns out that we weren't. So um, I have Powhatan, um, Narragansett and Mohawk uh, in my lineage. Um, and so, you know, when, when I was growing up, we celebrated the native culture a lot. Mm -hmm. My brother, my late brother used to um, dance in the powwows mm -hmm. um, when they were held both at the Indian Center here and at Sedgwick County Park. Okay. Um, and while he danced, I would be what was called the water boy. Mm -hmm. So I got to walk around with a <laughs> pail of water and a, and a cup, and everybody drank out of it. Of course, that was back oh, in the way, way in back. the 70s. Sure. So you know <laughs> we weren't too worried about everything we're worried about now. Right. So, right. Um, you know, and, and it was just it was it was just a celebration. It was just a fun mm -hmm. fun thing to do. There were you know arts and, and crafts and, and uh, different booths set up that you could go and buy native jewelry and, mm -hmm. and art and everything so that was always really really cool so what did you think your family lineage was well they told me that I, you know it was delaware and ojibwe mm -hmm. so um because that's what they had been told and they they were right in the spot of the of the united states where mm -hmm. you know where my tribal affiliation would be you know the delaware the powhatan they were all a poor uh, they were all a part of the same area. And what area was that? The Virginias, uh, mm -hmm. Rhode Island, um, you know, that east and the northeast uh, mm -hmm. part of the country, New York. Okay. Um, so, you know, it was, it was I, f I, f I found it very interesting as I've gone along and I'm still learning. I mean, that's the thing is that you don't discover mm -hmm. everything. So mm -hmm. you, you keep on learning more and more and, and more, so. And you're a working actor and you've got several film credits to your name mm -hmm. and you've also won some awards. So tell us a little bit about acting and how did that come about? Well, I mean, I've always, I knew I always wanted to be in entertainment. So I started out as a dancer. So when I was growing up, I, uh, you know, stood in front of a mirror and taught myself how to dance Saturday Night Fever uh -huh. and Michael Jackson and all that good mm -hmm. stuff. And then um, I used to sing at local jam sessions before karaoke. So you okay. actually had a live band uh -huh. that you had to go up and, and you know, they had, we had a couple of minutes to kind of understand what key I sang in and um, 
what song I was going to sing and if they mm -hmm. knew it or whatever. And then you just went away, you know, went Jumped at it. In. So yeah, it was, and it was a lot of fun. And so, and that helped with, with being comfortable on stage. Mm -hmm. And so, and then from there, you know, it just progressed to wanting to, to be an actor. And, mm -hmm. um, I mean, when I was in my teens, we moved to California and, but I was too young to, well, I was at, I was of at a driving age, but I couldn't afford the, we couldn't afford the insurance because mm -hmm. I was a male. Yeah. And so, um, you know, and my mom wasn't a big fan of driving in California if she mm -hmm. didn't have to. Um, when, when feeling <clears throat> that 101 or? It, well, yeah, well, good, this is, <laughs> and, um, so I worked at Disneyland for two years oh. and then um, we moved back here and I started auditioning and, and auditioned for uh, Wichita Community Theater okay. in 1993. Okay. And so the first play that I ever did was Richard II, Shakespeare's Richard II. Mm -hmm. I played two characters. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a word I was saying. <laughs> I just tried to say it the way the director, you know, showed me, you know, wanted me to say it and showed me how it was. It was very intimidating, but it was it was a great learning experience. So tell us a little bit about the movies you've been in. Well, you know, s some of the movies, I've, I mean, I I was in Walt Disney's The Haunted Mansion. Um, and so I mean, that was a great, fun experience. Mm -hmm. um, Eddie Murphy was in that, right? Eddie Murphy was yeah. in that, Terrence Stamp, the original Zod in the Superman movies. Okay. Um, and that actually, Taft Hart laid me into the union, into mm -hmm. uh, SAG after. Actors. Mm -hmm. And so I had a, every, I, I went ahead and joined the union because I had every intention of going back out to LA. And, but you know, my, my wife got pregnant with our son and, and he was born. And so I had a choice to make to either, sure. you know, say you can do everything and I'm going to go out and pursue mm -hmm. my career or I could stay here and, you know, be a dad and, and, and everything like that. And so I chose to stay here and, and be a dad. And I've been fortunate that I've been able to do a lot of the movies that I've been able to do from here. Mm -hmm. So um, I did a movie in Kansas City called um, Ambrose Beer Civil War Stories way back when. Mm -hmm. uh, and that had Campbell Scott in it. Um, and then I did um, a movie down in Texas um, and then came back up here and I've shot like a movie called Wichita where we shot at Cowtown. I think I probably shot, I don't know, eight or nine projects at Cowtown over um, the years. That's convenient. <laughs> oh, it is. I mean, I, I love Cowtown. And um, we did Death Alley there and, and we've done, we shot some uh, portions of the Contested Plains, a movie I did last year mm -hmm. um, there. So that was, that was a lot of fun. So, I mean, I've, you know, audition and hope for the best. And sometimes I win and sometimes it works. Most of the time I lose. So, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. What about upcoming projects? I think you've got something in the works right now. Well, I'm currently filming um, uh, a little short film called Long Claw. It's a part of an anthology. Um, and hence the, the, the mm -hmm. beard. And then um, in the summer, I'll be shooting um, Sod and Stubble, which is based on a, a novel. So about German immigrants in 1923. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it's got some really great cast members like Buck Taylor from Gunsmoke and Yellowstone oh, wow. and Tombstone. He's still alive? Yeah, he's wow. still alive. He's, and uh, uh, Mary McDonough, who was uh, Aaron Walton on The Waltons. Mm -hmm. and, and they were actually in the Contested Plains as well. So it's kind of like a... Nice little reunion. family reunion, yeah. yeah, yeah. So your career is doing so well, and I want to hear a little bit more about your passion and what kind of goals you're setting for the new year. Okay. But first, we're going to hear from another person who is also chasing after her passion of painting. We'll be right back. We are at the beautiful Diva Interiors and Furniture Store located in East Wichita. I am with Teresa Gigi Davis, who is an artist originally from Wichita, and now we're sitting in front of her beautiful artwork that she has painted in Paris, France. Gigi, before we get into your journey, tell us a little bit about your beautiful artwork. 
Well, first, thank you so much, Mindy, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. The art on the wall, I go to Paris. I do a lot of my art in Paris. Mm -hmm. I've been an artist for 45 years. This particular collection is a blush collection. with original nudes that have been done in Paris mm -hmm. from life. The frames are vintage I love those or frames. antique French frames. Mm -hmm. So I partner the frames that I find in Paris at the flea market with the art that I do there. I love it. And tell us a little bit, Gigi, about the documents that you have found and are incorporating. Yes, yeah, so while I'm in Paris, part of what I do is I, I also am an interior designer, so I am shopping for clients that I have back in the States, and I'm at flea markets, I'm at brocantes, I'm all around Paris digging through um, all kinds of stuff to find cool things that will fit into our plans. So. This trip, I found original antique French documents, and they are added to my artwork. This piece above, mm -hmm, I love that one. Yeah, has a whole page of document, and then and then I've painted and plastered and glazed and dripped on top of that. That is an antique Italian frame, actually. That is about 200 years old, wow. and this this piece has the document throughout the piece, mm -hmm. and this is a modern lucite frame, and I love the mix and the combination between the new and the old. I do too. How much time do you think you have in one of these pieces? Oh, well, they all vary. Mm -hmm. They vary so much. Mm -hmm. Because I do all of the nudes mm -hmm. live, I go to the studio when I'm in Paris, mm -hmm. and they do a series of poses, and my objective is not to reproduce a very realistic pose, but one that feels like it has movement and freedom mm -hmm. and style as they move through poses. So those are usually a lot faster. These, the abstracted, are many, many layers of mm -hmm. plaster and different glazes of subtle different colors that give them this really wonderful depth. Oh, they're beautiful. And I understand as an artist, every time you sell a painting, you're sending a little piece of your soul with, with that uh, person who bought your art. Is that right? I love that thought, yes, Do yes. Do you feel that way? Very much. Now, um, as far as your journey, you, had, you are basically our go-to kid. You know, you have had life's challenges. You're, you've got three adult children. You've got grandkids. You still have a mom that is elderly, but you suffered a tragedy very suddenly 13 years ago when you lost your husband in a plane crash. How did that redefine your life? Uh, my life, of course, was completely changed at that moment. And what I thought might be our future suddenly had mm -hmm. disappeared, and my children's as well. So he literally went out the door one morning and I never saw Didn't him again. Him. So at that point, um, you really start thinking through the grief and through the shock mm -hmm. soon after what you will do with the rest of your life. And a dear friend of ours came up to my youngest son. He put his arm around my youngest son and he said, think not why the Lord took your father, but why he left you. Mm. And I overheard that conversation. And at that point, I thought, this is the moment that I need to find a way to move myself forward and to move into a new version of myself, mm -hmm. reinvent myself. Not only was that the best thing I could sure. do for myself, but also the best thing I could do for, for my children. Right. And what did that look like? What were those action steps that you put in place or what, how did that transpire? I love to think that I started thinking about leveraging who I had been my whole life as a person. What did I enjoy? What was I good at? Mm -hmm. What could I take from my past 
and move forward and be productive and feel success and mm -hmm. um, be on the journey. Not that every moment is going to be success sure. because you right. do have plenty of failures, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. risk taking and stepping out of my comfort zone, pushing myself, it is not easy to do, as you know, mm -hmm. to step sure. out of your comfort sure. zone. What was the hardest um, stepping out for you? What do you think, what was your, did you hit a wall and then you said, I just gotta do this on my own? What was that? Was that learning to travel alone? Was it learning to eat alone? Was it learning to just strike up a conversation with a total stranger? What was it for you? Well, I think five years ago, when I first really began my studies in Paris, I, I had just moved as a single person much later in life and not realizing the challenges that that would bring. Mm -hmm. Got settled in Denver where my children were and right when I got to Denver, surprise, they found out they were moving for a year oh, and a half. Oh no. <laughs> so I'm in Denver alone. Um, so I was at a little bit of a low point in my life and I knew it was time to present myself with a challenge and to push myself out of my comfort zone. So I thought about what are my resources and how, again, how can I leverage who I've been for my life mm -hmm. to put myself in a different place that I would learn and experience growth. So I took all of my United miles, mm -hmm. um, booked a business class ticket and I enrolled in an art workshop mm. in Paris. Wow. By myself. Wow. You so sent yourself off to summer camp. I did. <laughs> um, took a solo trip, mm -hmm. packed all my art supplies. That's really, huge. really scared to sure. death. But put on your big girl panties. Put on my big girl pants mm -hmm. and self love is self-discipline. Oh, I love that. So, so many times I thought, no, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do this. But I thought, nope, Gigi, you are going mm -hmm. and you are doing this. Uh -huh. And it was one of the hardest weeks I've ever had. I was in a classroom of 15 artists from all over the world. Mm. And the, I, cool I was seriously yeah. the um, worst one in the class. <laughs> so I spent the whole week <laughs> in that position, which was a wonderful mm -hmm. learning I opportunity. Say, but think about what you learned. That'd be amazing. Gigi, they say art imitates life. So what is your favorite quote? Do you have anything that pertains to your transformation? I think my favorite quote right now, Mindy, is in reinventing myself. I'm not starting from start. I'm starting from experience. When we take a calculated risk, it's never a failure. We either win or we learn. That's absolutely right. And it's so important to take those risks. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to fail because that is our MBA in life, our own personal sure. MBA, our own personal education. Part of that is failing. And that's what where the learning does occur mm -hmm. and what moves us forward. It's not fun. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but it's so important to sure. our own personal growth. Well, we don't improve unless we make mistakes, right? Yes. I love that. Exactly. Gigi, I know you have an art degree, I believe, from KU. I do. But is it ever too late to start over in life as far as you, with a passion? Oh, you... my goodness. Never too late. I am just getting going <laughs> and so much ahead. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's... It's not that we're, um, we're kind of at the age where people are starting to retire. It's not that we're thinking about retirement. We're thinking about refiring instead of retiring. We're just getting started, right? Yes, I love that saying. Well, thank you, Gigi. I appreciate you being with us today. And good luck with your next art exhibit. And best wishes for continued success. Thank you so much, Mindy. Thank you. We're back now with Del now. And Delno, I know that you're a cancer survivor, so tell us a little bit about what that challenge brought into your life and what lessons you learned. Well, I mean, I had um, cancer in 1997. 
Um, it was skin cancer of the on my left foot. Mm. Um, it's a very long name. I think it was dermatofibrosarcoma. Sar um, it's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. And basically, it was a little mushroom that grew up on my foot and was starting to hurt me. So I went and to um, Hunter Healthcare Clinic, mm -hmm. and um, they thought that I should get a biopsy, and I, I did, and it turned out to be cancer. So it was, you know, it was, I was fortunate because we caught it early. You know, it was, if it would have progressed into the, the muscles and the blood mm -hmm. and the bone and stuff like that, um, you know, I might not be here sitting yeah. today talking yeah. to you. So, and I had ended up having a, a what's called a Mohs surgery. So they cut around there, cut around it and mm -hmm. take it off and, and then they keep cutting until they don't find any cancer anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had skin graft mm -hmm. put on that. Mm -hmm. So I was basically in bed for 22 days. I didn't have to have any chemo, any radi oh, radiation or nothing because it didn't spread. Good for you. So, um, you know, that I was, you know, in my 20s when that happened. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, 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 it taught me that life is short. Appreciate life. And appreciate it, yeah. Yes. yeah. And I also know that you have a special needs son, mm -hmm. Chase. Yep. And I know God gives special babies to special people. So <laughs> tell, me, tell me about Chase. Chase is, um, well, he's 18 and a half. So, you know, he, he still attends school. Um, but he's, he's a character. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, he, he loves to... He loves to sing. He loves to dance. He loves to be up on stage. I mean, I think he got that, from that bug from from me and his mom. Um, uh -huh. So he he just is very entertaining. Mm -hmm. You know, he likes to do different voices and change mm -hmm. his voice and stuff like that. Because mentally, he's about seven. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and and you know, he can be just as much trouble to handle. As any as a quote unquote normal mm -hmm. um, young adult, uh -huh. um, he's just a lot funnier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and they're know. so loving. They're just well, he, he is loving, so loving, but I mean, he has he's just he's human. He's just like anybody else. He has mm -hmm. his good days. He has his sure. bad days. He has things that yeah irritate him and annoy him. Usually, it's when I'm telling him to do something. Yeah, um, dad. <laughs> you know, and so you know, he he still lives at home. Mm -hmm. He's gonna always mm -hmm. live at home and mm -hmm. we're fine with that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, a couple of years ago, we adopted a daughter, okay. teenage daughter. Mm -hmm. um, so she lives at home, she's doing great. And uh, so yeah, it's just, it's just fun. Fun family. Fun Most family. of the time. <laughs> yes. I know you're a big goal setter. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about setting your intentions okay. and speaking those out into the universe. Well, I mean, my intentions is to, I, I would love to be on 1923, Yellowstone. I mean, any of the Taylor Sheridan mm -hmm. shows, I would love to be on um, because they're so well written right. and, and, the, and they're so well done. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I've auditioned for them, keep oh. on auditioning for them. And hopefully eventually, you know, that, that uh, one of the auditions will, uh, will stick and they'll go, that guy. We need and that guy. You've worked with Mo Brings Plenty, yeah. one of the actors mm -hmm. on Yellowstone. Yep. Yep. And you were recently at a function with him at the Cowboy Hall of Fame. Yes. Yes. It was actually um, the premiere of the Contested Plains. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and we were, uh, you know, it, it was, it was a nice, uh, it was a nice venue and I, it was a great museum to have, mm -hmm. to have that. And then, of course, we premiered it here at um, the Orpheum. But it's fun. At least yeah. I'm working. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time today. Thank and you. And best wishes to you on continued success. Thank you. And we'll be watching for you on the big screen. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for watching Ageless Enthusiasm. I'm Mindy East, and we'll see you next time.